You know, the other, you know, the other trial, I guess, that's going to hopefully start accruing, hopefully with this year, is, is the Armour 3 trial with Galaterone. And again, I think everybody is looking at this drug, especially with the emphasis, emphasis that's being placed on the ARV7. Can you, can you comment on Galaterone for us, Tia? Sure. Um, so Mary Ellen Taplin et al. Um, have been studying um, galeterone in, uh, in patients with metastatic CRPC and what they found is that it actually seems to be most effective in the patients who are ARV7 positive. And so based on that, they have designed a phase three trial that will take those patients um, and put them into um, the, the galaterone phase three trial. And again, galaterone is this sort of unique molecule that's got a little bit of abiraterone, it's got a little bit of enzalutamide, but the third component, it can actually degrade the rest of the, the AR. AR. Correct. correct, right. So, and again, we, you know, we know that's important because it seems that we, even though you have this ARV7 and, and it, can't, it can't bind the ligand, the, the receptor itself stays constitutively const constitutively active and still can, can go in and then stimulate transcription, translation, everything down the road. So anyway, this has been a great discussion. I think we've reviewed a lot of good information on advanced prostate cancer. Before we end today's discussion, I'd like to get final thoughts from each of the panelists in terms of big takeaway points for the audience. Chris? Well, let's go back to where we started. I'd say, uh I think for all of us out there practicing, uh, be familiar with the guidelines. The guidelines are very useful to help steer you to the, uh, the right and the wrong treatments in a particular setting, uh, and that could be the groundwork for starting on uh, how you're going to approach a patient. Joe? I would say that given the enormous amount of data that's now come out and the different options we have available for patients as they move through these disease states that uh, earlier definition of metastatic disease is going to benefit our patients and earlier is better. Tia? I think um, one message I'd like to leave people with is um, I think guidelines are fantastic. I think phase three clinical trials are great, but sometimes we have patients sitting in front of us who don't necessarily fit any of these categories and we have to continually use what we've learned with, and with guidance and from guidelines and the trials, but to sometimes find something for that individual patient that doesn't fit in the box. So that, that's why I'm an oncologist. Right. <laughs> um, I, I think what we're really going to need to do is to define molecular markers to help us distinguish uh, these patients. I mean, ARV7 is a start, uh, but we need other markers to say whether you should go on early chemotherapy or, or isotopes or what are the best ways to combine some of these agents. I'm excited about some of the data. I've heard about PARP inhibitors uh, that was presented at the AACR meeting this year. Uh, and that, you know, I think that we may get to the level within the next 10 years of looking at personalized medicine and prostate cancer. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us and we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative and look forward to seeing you again in the future.